What's up guys, tubrepairstore.com. Today we're gonna to be installing two large wall repair kits. This is a massive hole, much bigger than uh, my hand, probably the size of a dodgeball or something like that. Um, notice I am removing flex tape from the damage. If you are doing this, you need to remove all of that adhesive before you actually start the repair. Um, so the first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna take my drill bit here. It's a one eighth inch drill bit. And I'm gonna just cut off any crack that is shooting off the edge. Next, I'm gonna use an 80 grit sandpaper uh, and I'm gonna rough around the edges, rough that surface up so that it's gonna, the repair is gonna stick to it better. Um, and notice I'm going a few inches outside of the repair because I'm gonna have to build this up in the center and feather it down on the edges to make it look good. Um, always clean your surface in between steps with the acetone and a paper towel. Now you see I'm applying the mesh tape. I'm going horizontally first with about a half inch overlap. Uh, now I'm going back across vertically uh, with about a half inch overlap. So that's the technique you want to use um, when you're getting the base on a hole this big. And then I just cut away the excess so it helps if you have like a razor blade or, you know, a pair of scissors or work or, you know, that'll help too. Um, next, I'm going to use the glass putty and here, you know, I, I would recommend don't use much more than half of a can. Um, generally, if a hole is smaller than this, you want to use less than half a can. It's better to use uh, a smaller amount on this first coat because it can be hard. Uh, you don't really have a lot of support there over that mesh tape, so you got to be careful when you're applying it. You don't want to push that mesh tape in, so you got to really kind of gently swipe it up on there, and you're really just trying to set a foundation here. So um, always clean your tools in between, and then I like to blow dry it maybe a little bit, um, but you want to let that set up and kind of harden. You don't have to give it the full 30 minutes in between coats as we're building it up here. Um, and you don't have to sand it in between coats either. So notice I'm just, uh, let that set up. You'll, you'll be able to feel it. And as long as it's not leaving like a sticky residue or uh, something on your glove, then you'll be good to apply the next coat. So about 10 minutes or so, uh, you should be good to go. Um, so that second coat, we're just building it up a little bit. There you hear we've got the foundation kind of set. Uh, now I'm going to apply uh, a good amount of that second can here um, and really just trying to thicken it up and strengthen it up. Um, so take your time on this. The ratio calls for one part uh, hardener to 50 parts glass putty. Um, and don't get too hung up on that. Um, the ratio is, uh, that's the minimum ratio. We actually give you uh, one part hardener and 12 parts of putty. So essentially we give you 12 ounces of putty. You've got eight ounces of glass putty, four ounces of finished putty, and one ounce of blue cream hardener. So that blue cream hardener is more than enough to activate all of your putty. Um, you know, we recommend using it roughly in the ratio, but you don't, don't even need to use all of it. It does not take much. So while that is setting up, I'm going to go and I'm going to uh, test my colors and figure out which one is closest here. And so I knew that almond would be a little dark, but I wanted to check it. So here it looks like the gold white um, is the one that I use. And notice I wipe my swatches off with the acetone in a paper towel. That's how you clean up your surface. So here I've got uh, one part or four parts resin, which was two ounces. Then I add one part catalyst, which was half an ounce. And then I add two parts reducer, which is one ounce. So take your time on that. Check the chart in the instructions um, on how to get to that. That is the minimum ratio. You can be over on the catalyst and reducer. So if you were a little over half an ounce, you'd be fine. Or if you're a little over on the reducer, that is fine as well. The key is you don't want to be under on that ratio. Otherwise, your product might be too thick um, and it may uh, cause your sprayers to malfunction. So just be aware of that. Um, now it's all set up. I'm just going over it with the 80 grit sandpaper, knocking down the edges, really trying to smooth out the edges. You're not trying to get it perfectly smooth on that glass putty. 
that's where we're going to do this finish putty here. So same thing on the finish putty. It calls for a 1 to 50 ratio. Um, you've got more than enough hardener uh, to set that up. So um, don't worry about that. Once you get it spread on, you're really just trying to give it a nice even coat. And then you give it about 15 minutes. Um, and this is where you do want... Uh, you do want this to be pretty smooth, very smooth, actually, when you're done. So if you can feel it, you're going to be able to see it. So if you have any imperfections, any lips around the edges, anything like that, you're going to be able to see it when you spray it. So be careful with that. Now here I'm wiping on the wipe-on primer. And notice how it dries up here. You don't want it to be wet when you uh, spray it. So to let that dry up before you go forward and spray it, it'll take about 20 seconds. Okay, so final test there. Um, just wanted to, you know, show you how strong it, it was. We're going to, you know, it's probably stronger or just as strong as uh, the other parts of the wall. So we're super happy with this thing. Now I'm just fogging on my coating. Uh, on a big vertical surface like this, just be careful. Dry it in between coats. You know, we recommend drying it anywhere from like one to two minutes in between coats. Um, and the best way is... Uh, just to take your time you don't want to dry it you know for like five or ten minutes because then that could you, you won't get as good a finish but you know i'd say you know one and a half two minutes on a on a big vertical repair like this just let that set up um, and then fog it on build it up and then when you're done it's going to look great so we were super happy with this it was a very strong repair um we just saved this customer's tub that tub was dead um and we saved that tub we saved this customer a ton of money go to tubrepairstore.com